the Book of Mormon, an account written by the Hand of Mormon, upon plates taken from the plates of Nephi is a sacred text of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, LDS. It was translated and produced by Joseph Smith, who founded the church in 1830. Smith claimed to have received a revelation from God who told him the truth about Jesus, the Americas, and God. However, the church now believes that many prophets authored the text. According to the church, the text is the only true story of Jesus Christ. The church is known today for its missionary activities. The Book of Mormon is best understood as religious scripture. Although the text focuses on God's attitude towards the Americas and the ancient American people, there are also doctrinal musings on questions such as what happened to Adam and Eve, and where Jesus visited after the resurrection. Smith explains in his introduction that the text's purpose is to spread the truth about Jesus and how men can achieve salvation in the afterlife. The text is divided into smaller books, and these books are named after their primary narrators. Although the Book of Mormon is largely chronological, there are some chapters, such as the Words of Mormon, that provide commentary on the preceding events. Every book works towards the text's purpose of bringing men closer to God and Jesus Christ. The books highlight the glory of the Lord and how important it is to worship Him for our earthly and eternal happiness. Two ancient civilizations feature in the text. The first is a group called the Jaredites. The Jaredites descend from the Tower of Babel, and this is one of the oldest civilizations in the world. The second is a group hailing from Jerusalem. From 600 B.C. onwards, this group divided into two factions called the Nephites and the Lamanites. Native Americans descend from the Lamanites. After thousands of years, the Nephites and Jaredites are gone. The first book in the text is known as the Book of Nephi I. The book features a man called Lehi and his sons Laman, Lemuel, Sam, and Nephi. Nephi loves God and he's devoted to his faith. Laman doubts Nephi's beliefs. God speaks to Nephi and puts him in charge of his family because of his devotion, and he shows Nephi what will happen to Jerusalem if he doesn't save it. God charges Nephi with recovering brass plates from Jerusalem before they are destroyed by the Jews. Moses wrote prophecies on these plates, and they tell everyone of a promised land. Nephi and his family will reach this promised land if they succeed in God's quest for them. Laman makes everything difficult for Nephi and tries to talk him out of it, but Nephi's faith never wavers. The following books, Nephi 2, Jacob, Enos, Jerem, and Omni, chronicle Nephi's successes and failures. Nephi builds a boat and travels to Jerusalem. He recovers the plates and convinces his family of God's love and truths. God rewards Nephi by calling him a prophet, and he charges Nephi with bringing people to the Lord and saving their souls. Nephi records his family's journey across the world until they reach the Americas, also known as the Promised Land. By now, Nephi has many followers and he's recognized as a prophet. He records his scripture on brass plates just as Moses did, and he hopes that people will continue to trust in Jesus. When Nephi reaches America, he believes that Babylon will fall. He sees many disturbing visions about what happens to the unfaithful and those who follow Satan. Laman's faith wavers and some follow him instead. It's around this time that this original family from Jerusalem splinter into Nephites and Lamanites. Nephi leads one group and Laman leads the other. In a Nephi 3, Jesus visits the Americas. He's ascended to heaven after the resurrection and is now here to bring peace and order back to a fractured community. Jesus gathers believers around him, and the factions stop fighting with each other. The people of the Americas prosper and rightly believe this to be the promised land. However, it isn't long before war breaks out again and rival factions wrestle for domination. One of the most significant men to feature in the Book of Mormon is Mormon. Mormon descends from the Nephites, and he's rumored to be a great visionary. The Nephites charge him with chronicling their lives and victories, and he's the keeper of Nephi's sacred records. Once Mormon becomes an old man with his own son, Moroni, he passes the records down for safekeeping. The Book of Mormon promotes American exceptionalism because it suggests that God values the Americas above all others. The Nephites and the Lamanites slowly replace the Jaredites, who settled in America long before them, because of God's grace and divine will. Every book in the Book of Mormon follows this theme. Nephi and his followers believed that they were righteous and good, and that God would therefore always protect them. 
The Nephites, however, faded because of idolatry and improper worship. They forgot God and worshipped the prophets. The Lamanites, on the other hand, lived righteously and virtuously. God favored them and that's why they survived when wicked civilizations fell. The Book of Mormon argues that this is just and good. I hope you enjoyed this video leave a like if you did and be sure to subscribe thank you.